Fake News Welcome to today's headlines. Time to stop the iPod madness. Time to stop the iPod madness. To my dear listeners from wherever you're listening from, please stay tuned as I read to this news. The killing of Fatima, a pregnant housewife with her four children and other innocent people of northern extraction, allegedly by the violent and outlawed indigenous people of the Afro Ipob, is crude, barbaric, and condemnable. Since the arrest and detention of their leader, Unamdekanu, for alleged treason, IPOP, through its undoing, the Eastern Security Network, ESN, has turned into a Frankenstein monster, unleashing terror on peaceful and law-abiding people of the region. The IPOP, which is formed to promote secession agenda, has deviated from its core mandate and resorted to violence. The frequent attacks on security formations and declaration of Monday as a work free day by the notorious group which has negatively affected the socio-economic development of Southeast state as some of their greatest undoing. It is sad that Igbo socio-cultural groups and political leaders have remained mute amidst the continuing killing of defenseless people with threats to the corporate existence of the country. There is nothing wrong for IPOB or any other similar organization to pursue genuine, peaceful and legitimate demand for self-determination within the ambit of the laws. Had IPOB respected the fundamental human right of other Nigerians, nobody would have raised an eyebrow about their activities. The inhuman, near dangerous dimension which their agitation has taken raises suspicion on their real mission or motive. For instance, what has the agitation for Biafra got to do with guns and spilling of human blood? The late Biafran warlord, Emeka Odumegu Ojoko, after he was granted pardon, regretted plunging the country into a needless civil war. He cautioned those who were promoting the idea of Biafra to be more courteous in their demand. Sadly, the Biafra promoters threw his wise counsel into the wind. Now, Biafra has become a matter of life and death to many Igbos, including the intellectuals who are supposed to guide the younger ones. There is no gain saying that Igbos are the most successful tribe in Nigeria. They are entrepreneurs with massive investment in pharmaceutical, automobile and other lucrative businesses. 
Hidus have made great fortunes in northern Nigeria, especially in states like Kano, Kaduna, Ketsina, and Shokoto. With this success story, one expects IPOP to be more tolerant and nationalist in both their outlook and agitation. Instead, the violent activities of IPOP has continued to become a source of fears and worries among the northern marketers who outlage their goods and services to the region. It is no longer news that trucks which carry perishable goods and domestic animals are increasingly becoming targets of these urchins of vagabonds. It is on record that IPOB members have severally attacked and set ablaze many trucks belonging to northerners. The questions begging for answers are what are the sins of these northerners who reside in the southeast and engage in lawful businesses? Are the poor northerners opposed to the realization of the Biafra of their dream? Do IPOB members knows that these poor northerners will stay in their region and engage in many jobs in order to take out a living are also victims of poor governance in the country some cannot return back to their ancestral communities because bandits have sacked or displaced them instead of killing them IPOP should direct whatever grievances they have to their respective governors. IPOP should first hold their leaders accountable for trillions of naira received in the last two decades of our democracy. To my dear listeners, now we've come to the end of our today's news. Please do drop by at the comment section and let us know what your view is all about. Thank you for listening.